Hello everybody, this is Danilo Cuellar from PeacefulAnarchism.com out here in the magnificent nature once again with you all. A friend of mine recently got into a car accident and his car was totaled and now he has to buy a new car. And some people would look at this situation and conclude, well, that kind of is a tragedy. But we have to look on the bright side. He is stimulating the economy because listen, now he has to give money to the car manufacturer and those employees now have more work. That company has more money. Those employees and that business owner now can take that money and buy the things they want to buy. Food, vacation, a new car, new clothes. They have stimulated the economy. Isn't that wonderful? Thank goodness for your car accident. Look on the bright side. You're stimulating the economy. What is the error in that logic? It is known as the broken window fallacy, pioneered by the French economist in the 19th century, Frederick Bastiat. And the basic principle is the broken window, imagine a store owner, let's say a bakery, has his window broken by a little hooligan throwing a rock. Everyone says, oh, it's so terrible, your window's broken. And then people, some people say, no, actually it's a good thing because now you have to buy a new window. So you're giving money to the window maker and now he can have more money and he feeds his family and he takes his family on a trip, whatever. Isn't that wonderful? But no, there is another concept called the seen versus the unseen. And it's illustrated by what would my friend or the bakery owner have used that currency to do in the absence of the destruction? All we know is the world in which the destruction did happen. And now my friend and the bakery owner must divert their resources and capital to replacing the damaged item. And so all they have is a new window or a new car. But if they didn't have that destruction, where would they have spent that currency? Let's say, let's say my friend bought a, another car for $2,000. In the alternate universe where the car accident did not happen, he would have had his car and the $2,000. But now, after the destruction, he is down $2,000 and he has a car again. So he had to pay money to get back to the status quo. He didn't stimulate the economy. That's not the creation of wealth, that's the destruction of wealth. Destruction of wealth does not equal prosperity. Destruction of wealth merely equals destruction. If this is true, if all we need to do to stimulate the economy is to destroy wealth. Do not stop at your cars. Do not stop at your car. Why not destroy your neighbor's car? Why not everyone destroy their own cars? Why don't we destroy our houses? Construction workers now have jobs. Isn't that a good thing? No. This is the forceful diversion of resources from where they would have otherwise gone to to where they must now go because of the destruction. Destruction never results in prosperity. It's a loss of wealth. And it's unfortunate that this broken window fallacy is used many times in the mainstream media every single day. One of the most common fallacies, not least of all, the idea that World War II brought the United States out of the Great Depression, which says that murder is good for the economy. Isn't that a twisted idea? No, World War II did not stimulate the economy, did not get us out of the Great Depression. It prolonged the Depression along with FDR's New Deal policies, his extremely interventionist and meddling economic policies. War and destruction and murder can never create wealth. It can only destroy wealth. That is all the state can do, is destroy wealth. It knows only coercion and threats of violence. It is only through an unhampered market economy, through entrepreneurship, through trade, that wealth is created, that prosperity is developed, that innovations flourish. Be careful of the broken window fallacy. It is rampant throughout these lands in print and in the media. And you would do well to acquaint yourself with it so as to not be deceived. Thank you very much for listening. This is Danilo Cuellar from PeacefulAnarchism.com. Enjoy beautiful nature.
Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more of it, please feel free to donate and help me interview other fascinating people. You can do so through Patreon. That's patreon.com slash peacefulanarchism to help me out. A dollar a show is all I ask. If you feel so inclined to donate more, please feel free. It will only assist me in spreading the message of freedom and volunteerism that much farther and that much more efficiently. You can also donate to my Bitcoin. My Bitcoin address is in the description to my videos as well as on my website, peacefulanarchism.com. And while you're on my site, there's a donate button to donate through PayPal. If you prefer to donate through PayPal, you can do so with that. But Patreon is a little bit easier for content creators as you can set up a recurring donation if you so desire. Also, while you're on my website, peacefulanarchism.com, please feel free to sign up, enter your email address, sign up for my newsletter, and you'll receive updates every time I post something, a video or an interview. I do not send out any spam. Or you can also follow me on Facebook under facebook.com slash peaceful anarchism or facebook.com slash Danilo Cuellar 3, I believe. Danilo Cuellar 3. So either, either one of those methods, if you are able to donate, I would be most appreciative. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you have a magnificent day.